Have you ever thought about where your produce comes from? Most grocery chains receive produce from various local and national farmers. In fact, there are about 3.4 million farmers in the United States today. But of that staggering number, only 45,000 are black farmers. At The Better Buggy, we are a proud group of Atlanta-based black-owned farmers, selling produce locally and nationwide. Our easy-to-navigate online platform makes it easy for you to make a one-time purchase or to simplify your life by subscribing to our weekly produce box. Whichever frequency you choose, you can order with confidence knowing you'll receive 100% organic farm fresh produce. If you're looking for a thoughtful gift for a loved one that they'd actually find useful, be sure to pop by our online store where you can snag a gift card your recipient can use to order their own produce and t-shirts. Ready to start supporting local black owned farms and making healthier food decisions? Visit thebetterbuggy.com now to start shopping. The Supreme Court will hear the latest appeal filed by Mumia Abu-Jamal, the 67-year-old convicted cop killer, is arguing that his convictions must be reconsidered. He is currently serving a life sentence for the 1981 killing of Philadelphia police officer Daniel Faulkner. The Supreme Court. Ladies and gentlemen, Mumia Abu Jamal's appeal is going before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. So the latest appeal filed by Mumia Abu Jamal and a related suit brought by the widow of the Philadelphia police officer he's convicted of killing will now go before the Pennsylvania Supreme Court. The state superior court ruled Thursday that it lacked jurisdiction to hear Abu Jamal's latest challenge of his conviction and life sentence for the 1981 traffic stop death of officer Daniel Faulkner. The panel also found the state's top uh, court is better for, you know, addressing this appeal and plea by Maureen Faulkner to intervene in the case in opposition of Jamal's bid for freedom. Neither side opposed the transfer to the Supreme Court, the panel noted. The ruling comes less than six months after the state Supreme Court rejected Maureen Faulkner's bid to disqualify the city district attorney's office from continuing to work on the matter. She sought to have the Attorney General's office appointed to take over the prosecution. Maureen Faulkner has argued the district attorney, Larry Krasner, and his aides have linked to Abul Jamal's case that should have disqualified them and that the office had not handled the case with due vigor. Krasner, a Democrat, has denied any substantial con uh, conflict exists. The 67-year-old Abul Jamal is arguing that his conviction must be reconsidered, especially in light of the discovery by the DA's office of previous undisclosed boxes of material and files on his case. Yes. And many of you might remember, it might have been either 2017 or 2018, I did a video on that, where they found files and all kinds of evidence in boxes stored in a closet at City Hall. And none of that evidence was included in the original case. You know, hiding stuff just to make sure a black man goes to jail. You know, that, that little old trick. So that's what they're challenging now. And those boxes, ladies and gentlemen, when they found them, they were sitting in that closet for over 30 years until somebody went in there and came across those boxes. Never seen before in court, ever. All right, so that's what they're talking about, the undisclosed boxes uh, of material and files on his case. He is serving a life sentence. And the uh, intervening decades, you know, it, it, it is a shame. How the hell do you sit? How the hell do you send somebody to jail on murky evidence? I mean, seriously, they do this every day in America and don't have 
I mean, no kind of conscious whatsoever. We have seen through the centuries, no conscience was to just put them in there. We don't care if they will just say they did it. We don't care. Hide the evidence. Just make sure he goes to jail. <laughs> Woo. They, you know how many times they have done this in this country? Countless times. Countless. I mean, if we were the real criminals, how come y'all keep putting black people in jail for crimes they didn't commit and, and giving them astronomical sentence on little petty crimes? It, it sure don't match up with what you claim. But, you know, I can't expect an animal to care about that. You know, it, that's like me telling Loretta, you know, hey, um, you, how do you feel about this person being in jail? She ain't going to feel nothing. She's an animal, right? She won't feel a thing. All right. So his claims of being unfairly convicted have drawn fervent supporters, both in the United States and internationally. You know, actually, I remember when he was arrested. I remember watching it on the news and there were a lot of people around when he was arrested. There were a lot of people on the streets and that shot technically could have came from anybody in that crowd. It didn't necessarily have to come from him. I, I remember when this happened. In fact, um, he used to be on WDAS out of Philadelphia and he would give these daily commentaries. Many people that grew up in the city know exactly what I'm talking about. Mumia used to give these daily commentaries, and, you know, and it was just empowerment type things for the black community. And they were actually good. I mean, I used to listen to them practically every day. And the only reason why I was listening to them every day is because they would come on when I was on the road or coming home from work or I was going somewhere, his commentary would come on and it would be maybe like a, a five minute commentary. Um, and, and, and that's what he would give these daily commentaries. And many of you remember that WDAS. So I'm very familiar with him going way back, you know, and, and I remember seeing him occasionally on the news back then. But y'all, please tell me what you think. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.